Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. I haven't put out a new video in a while because I've been busy with my band, A Little Hostile. I started off in the band a couple of years ago playing bass, then moved to rhythm guitar, and more recently moved to drums. I've definitely been enjoying my time with the band, but I've had to learn over four hours of music pretty quickly to get up to speed. All that said, since time is a bit of a hot commodity lately, I'll try to waste as little of your time as possible and get straight to the point. Today I'd like to talk to you about jacking effects in a project. While there may be a handful of jacking plugins that get on your last nerve, that's not what I mean. What I'm talking about is ducking a plugin in favor of something else. Let's take a look at a project and I'll give you an example. The project I have open is my cover of Spoiled by the band Basement. The guitars and the drums were performed by me, the bass was performed by Adam Granatella from Hi YouTube I'm Dad, and the vocals were performed by Brendan Fowler from Goat City. Look for this track to be available on your favorite streaming platforms on June 23rd. It'll be listed under the name The Dad Rock Project. Let's take a listen to this interlude and bridge. This is a perfect example where ducking in effect can be handy. Before I play that portion of the song, let's take a look at the effects that I've got on the vocals. I'll bring up my mixer, and we can see I have an effects bus here at track number 33, and inside of that effects bus, I've got chorus, reverb, and delay. If we take a look at my vocals bus, you can see that I'm feeding the vocals to the reverb and the delay, and I'm specifically sending Vox 2 to the chorus. For this demonstration, I've purposely overdone the effects, so you can hear the effect is overtaking the lead vocal. We'll take a listen to the music, and then we'll solo the vocals so you can clearly hear what's happening. The delay and the reverb sound good on the vocals, but as I said, it's a bit much, particularly in the quieter parts of the music. Let's go to the beginning of the bridge and I'll solo the vocals so you can clearly hear the effects. I have never been in love. I pretend to care, convince myself that it's enough. I was never there. I am hiding in the dust. Sweet me underneath the chair. Keep on giving. It would seem that the obvious answer to fix this problem is to simply turn down the effects. But in this case, I would rather have the effects duck and fill in after the lead vocals stop. Some of this can be done by automating the sends to the effects, but another way that you can do this that takes a whole lot less time is by sidechaining your lead vocals to a compressor on the effects bus. Let me show you what I mean. I'll take a look at my effects bus and insert Reacomp. Let's move this where we can see it. And by default, the detector input on Reacomp is the main input. What this means is it's going to listen to whatever is fed into that track. So if I start to adjust the parameters of the compressor without changing the input, this will simply compress whatever is on this track based on what is happening in this track. Instead, what I need to have happen is for the compressor to react to the vocals. We can achieve that by changing the input detector from main inputs to auxiliary inputs. But let's not click that just yet. I'll click away so this stays on main inputs. Vox 1 is the track that's feeding into the bridge, so what I'd like to do is route Vox 1 into my effects bus. I can do that by left clicking and dragging the routing button over to my effects bus. If I drag from the routing button on Vox 1 to effects bus and release, my send has been created on inputs 1 and 2 of that track. Let's delete this send and instead drag from Vox 1 onto Reacomp, and that has automatically sent my audio to tracks 3 and 4 and tracks 3 and 4 coincide with the auxiliary input. I'll close my routing dialog, and let's change our detector input to auxiliary inputs, again because that coincides with channels 3 and 4. Now if I play back the same selection, we should see signal on here based on what's happening on the Vox 1 track. Let's test. I have never been in love. That send has created channels 3 and 4 on track 33, so let's play that same piece again, and you'll notice a little bit of a difference in the meter. Let's take a look. I have never been 
The meters on the left are channels one and two, and on the right are channels three and four. What's important about this is channels three and four are not feeding to the main output, but I'm using that now as the detection circuit for my compressor. So any changes that I make to this compressor are reacting based on what's happening on the vocals, but it's affecting what's happening on channels one and two. So what I'm saying is I can use the volume of the vocals to turn down the effects. I'll set my ratio somewhere around maybe three to one. We'll leave my attack time pretty low because we want it to respond fairly quickly based on the vocals. And let's bring our release time down to maybe 50 milliseconds or so. 44 is good enough. As I begin to turn down my threshold, again, this threshold will be based on the volume of the vocals, and we should start to hear the effects turn down as the vocals exceed the threshold. I have never been in love. I pretend to care, convince myself that it's enough. I was never there. So as you can hear, the effects are now being turned down as the vocals exceed our threshold. I would like for those effects to stay up just a little bit longer, so I think I'd like to change my attack time. This way it doesn't choke out the vocals quite so quickly after he comes back in on the vocals. Let's try somewhere around maybe 17 milliseconds, and I'll also increase the release time. This can take some trial and error. There is no perfect setting, so you'll have to adjust this to suit your performance. Let's try again. I have never been in love. I pretend to care, convince myself that it's enough. I was never there. I am hiding in the dust. Sweep me underneath the chair. That sounds pretty good there. I like the way that the effects help to fill in the gaps when he stops singing, but they quickly get out of the way once he starts singing so you can hear the vocals clearly. Let's take this out of solo and hear it in context. So as you can see, Recomp can easily be used to help you with your ducking effects. So essentially what we're doing is side-chaining the vocals to the compressor on the effects bus, so the compressor responds to the side-chain signal instead of the normal detector input. So with that said, any plugin that accepts a side-chain input can be fed with channels 3 and 4 from another channel. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, this is normally where I say I like coffee, but I haven't even got any coffee. I gotta go get a cup real quick. Maybe I can make this work. I gotta get one that looks good on camera. I can't get one of these stupid cups. Nope, not that one. Ah, the perfect cup. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this out in post. Freaking door. Okay. I like coffee. Or super thanks link below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. I gotta go put this cup up now. They'll never know I never had any coffee in it.